Men's basketball taking on the Belmont Bruins for maybe one more time before they leave the Atlantic Sun. Adam Salazzo, Isaiah Brown, Tommy Hubbard, also Marcus DeBones, three seniors plus the junior transfer. Getting intense, getting into the mood, getting ready to go. Isaiah Brown early in the game as the Buccaneer faithful in attendance inside the University Center at Mercer University. Brown early on has a shot block, but they get it back to him, and he'll go up strong and one. He'd make the free throw, but in 14 seconds of the first half, Brown would score his only three points of the game. More on him later. Meanwhile, Marcus DeBose there picking up the slack on the loose ball and then picking a pocket. He'll go the length of the floor. DeBose with a big first half. He would go on to 15 points in the game. Also, Adam Salazzo with a team-high 16 as he's able to get to the rim. Bucks outscored the Bruins 32-18 to 18 in the paint, but Salazzo can also step back out of the paint and hit a jumper as well. Still in the first half, long baseball pass for Marcus DeBose. He's there with the finish. Bucks had a lead at the half, up five. They were up by more. Belmont got close, and then Drew Hanlon and company taking over Hanlon had nine points he was cold in the first half but came back with a big three there Jarvis Jones then trying to weather the storm after a 9-0 run by the Bruins to start the second half Jones trying to answer he'd find the bottom of the net with a three there and then this is a big moment in the game Isaiah Brown will foul out with seven minutes to go in the contest as he lowered the shoulder on Mick Hedgepath there Blake Jenkins, other end for the Belmont Bruins, going up strong. He would draw the foul and one. And then Karan Johnson with a huge three, top of the key. Belmont extends the lead. Hubbard trying to answer with a jump shot inside the arc. That gets the Bucks back to within four. And then Belmont's going to commit a costly turnover here. Right through the hands of Ian Clark. Clark finished with 19 points but couldn't hang on to that one. However, on the other end, Bucks can't capitalize. Shot blocked, and then Clark will go the length of the floor. Fancy move in the finger roll layup for Clark. Four assists also to go along with his game high 19. Hubbard spots for three, hits the running three as time winds down to try to keep the Bucks in it. But they're going to have to foul Drew Hanlon. He'll go to the free throw line, one of the better free throw shooters in the country. Hanlon. Doesn't get it. So the Bucks still with a door left wide open. They get it down the floor, and they will get a look in the corner to DeBose. Shot fake, and then with a three fall, it is in the jaws. The ball was more than halfway below the rim and still didn't fall. So a defensive rebound, Belmont, the foul, and then Blake Jenkins to the free throw line. He had not made a free throw yet in the game. He was the guy you wanted to foul, and he left the door open again for the Bucks. This time, it's Salazzo, top of the key, three, no. And a rebound, Mick Hedgepath, he was fouled, and that's all the help the Bucks would get. Hedgepath and the Bruins would hit the rest of the free throws down the stretch to bounce the Bucks from the tournament. Winds up being a single-digit defeat, 69-61, the final score there. And three players in double figures for the Bucks. but you wonder what would have happened if Isaiah Brown had been able to score after the 1946 mark in the first and not foul out. In Macon, Georgia, John Stevens.